Sure. How many sliders do we have? Uh, we have around 12 slides. Okay, great. You have 15 minutes. <laughs> Also, you can hammer turn around this one. Everybody, okay? Yeah, how's it? Is it good? Is it good? Yeah, I'll edit it. Don't worry. No, I think you should. Yeah, okay. Oh, that one is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's recording. Oh, it's for his mom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is what I learned. Okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should be going right now. I'll go to full screen and see. Yeah. Take care. But it doesn't matter. I don't have to do anything here. It just knows. No signal. I don't know why. Next time, everything go to the cook. Oh, uh, no. This is the. I don't know. What the hell? <laughs> Great way to start off the recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You do you know where to go? It's going to work. I've done this before. Ah, second screen. Should do the trick. Yeah. Are they there? There we are. Thank you, Japan. What was the problem? Oh, see there. Oh, see there. It has like a. It's showing only the, the, the PC. It's oh, PC. you need a detection chance. Okay. Okay, so listen up here. Okay. Are you standard presentation? Okay. Presentation. Just press F5. Just click the presence. Not that one, yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is David Kahn, and this is my partner, Raul. And we're going to Alaska to present our research. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Not California, going to Alaska. Yes! <laughs> yes. Excellent. Okay. So our research is going to be about the comparison between mobile application technologies uh, based on the uh, KSA, the knowledge, skills, and abilities. The following areas that we're going to be looking at are the architecture, cloud computing, and unit testing. All right, next slide, please. All right, so in this presentation, we're going to be talking about the Windows uh, Phone 8 application lifecycle. And we're going to talk about the things that takes place in your phone, such as when you, when you turn it on, and you're not running the app anymore, and where it's being stored. Yeah. So we're going to look at that. Yeah. Uh, who has a Windows phone here? I think Richard has that. Richard has it. <laughs> he uses it. No, he goes in the hand. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's, that's okay. okay. We have the VM ready. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for today's topic, we're going to be covering application lifecycle, and then we're going to look at Android versus Windows 8. All right, so what we have right here is we have a, an image showing the application lifecycle. Again, the topics that we're going to be discussing today is going to be the activated, deactivated, dormant, and then tombstone. And then we're going to further look at uh, this, uh, this image and then look at different components of it and further explain it in detail so that you know exactly what's going on. So next time in the slide, why don't you put activating one, two, deactivate. You are using one, two, three, four. Then in figure also, you never use a one, oh, two, three, four. Oh, yes, yes, we label it. Okay, okay no problem. Also, this figure comes from where? Yours or Microsoft? Microsoft. Microsoft. Citation. Okay. okay. Means you are not bothered, okay? <laughs> okay, we just, okay. Yes, next time, okay. Good. All right, so to start off, you need to know that the Windows application, uh, the environment that it uses, it relies on, it notifies the, uh, the app of the lifecycle through, the, through events. the events, okay? And how it works is, so the events are the following. We have the application launching event, and what that does is, whenever you, whenever you launch an app, it's gonna call this event handler method, application launching, it calls it, and then that's how it launches. All right, inside this, this is where you want to store your, your data, basically. Okay, you, your story, I'm sorry, this is where you want to yeah, have your data so that it launches, okay? Yeah. And then in the application uh, activating event handler, so when you, when you bring an application that's in a suspend state back to an active state, it's gonna call that uh, event handler method, application activating. Yep. Yep. All right, when your application is no longer focused, it's gonna go into the application, it's gonna call the application deactivating 
method, event handler method, and that puts it into that suspend state. But the suspend states, we're going to talk later in the, the later slides. My partner is going to discuss it. Are you going to get the YouTube example now? Or for the uh, not yet. Okay, and then uh, lastly, we have the application closing, the event handler method. So when you're done using your app and you close it, it calls that event handler method and closes it completely. Oh, makes sense. I'll talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is kind of gives you an overview of what it looks like, the, uh, the, the, the syntax, the code for, uh, this is in C-sharp for those event handler methods that I was speaking about. So again, I'll just give you an overview. Yeah, this is from Visual Studio 2013. Mm -hmm. um, this is when we're developing the app, right? Right. You and we did not code this. This is actually generated for us yeah. using uh, yeah, Visual Studio. Yeah. yeah. Even the comments. We've not written any of them. We have made it for us. All right. So let's talk a little bit about launching and activating. Okay. Again, when you launch an application, it's going to call that event handler method, application launcher. All right. That's going to go to the running state. All right. And once you close that app, again, it calls the application closing event handler method, and then it's no longer running. Okay, so also what you need to know in this one is that uh, <clears throat> there's, this, uh, there's this term that we use, it's called fast application resume. Fast application resume, how it works is this. For example, let's say, Dr. Al, let's say you're, you're looking at a YouTube video. I don't know why, but you are. No, last night I watched it. Genghis Khan. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and um, I didn't go some strange YouTube place, but I watched it. Genghis right. Khan. Let's say you're watching that, and then you happen to be doing something else. And let's say you want to go back to that uh, that YouTube app. Okay, that's what fast application resume does. It it allows you to bring back that that old YouTube, not a new one, but the old YouTube that you're currently on. Okay. What he means is, uh, should I? Should yeah. I get that? Uh, what he means is that, uh, say you're watching the video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now uh, you go some. Uh, now you set, you open another app mm -hmm. and do something else. Mm -hmm. Now if you wanted to go to YouTube, uh, so what you do is. Uh, you press the start button mm -hmm. on the Windows phone and then select YouTube. So the default behavior is that it will start a new instance of YouTube mm -hmm. where your video won't be there. It's going to start all over again where you have to ha you have to type changes kind of again. Okay. But fast application resume is going to help you in the sense that it won't create a new instance. Right. That's what okay. you need, right? Exactly. The old one will be brought back. Okay. Right. But that's not default behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Next slide. Okay. Uh, next is dormant and tombstone. Like David, uh, 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 my friend David, he, talk, he told you about the event handler methods, the uh, application deactivating and the application closing, right? Absolutely. Okay, now what he also talked about when an application gets suspended. Now, what does suspended mean? Suspended means when, uh, yeah, this is what suspended actually means inactive, right? Going to sleep, okay? So, uh, how does an application get suspended? Like, uh, has anyone uh, done threads in Java over here? Threads? Yeah, that's great. So there's something called suspended state, right? Mm -hmm. Suspended state, right? Looks yeah. like you wanted to get the printout that usually going to the queue, suspended. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So in, over here, what happens is these apps, Windows 8 apps, I'm only talking about Windows 8 apps, I'm not talking about iOS or Android. Uh, these Windows 8 apps, um, there's something called dormant and tombstone state. But, and by tombstone, uh, it's the literal meaning of a tombstone, where we put a, a dead body, okay? A tombstone and a dormant state. And uh, David later is going to beautifully explain you about how the applications work when you're switching from one app to the other. Uh, but now I'll be explaining you about the dominant tool store. So uh, when you're working with an app, say, um, uh, let me pick up, pick someone. Let me say Himchan. Okay? Yeah. Why yeah. Himchan? Himchan is, him is, him is a very good guy and he's a very good man. Okay, uh, so he's a very good person. Uh, he because? Asked, no one can see me in his video, so you are saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, okay, uh, so Himchan is, um, say he's texting, okay, he's texting on his Windows phone, and now suddenly he gets a phone call from his, uh, from his friends. Mm -hmm. So you get that notification, that a call, no, you don't get a notification, it just comes up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So his texting app right now is suspended, meaning that it's still in memory, and all the objects and all the data is stored in memory, but it's not on the screen right now. It's in memory, so it's suspended, it's dormant. So that is when an application is dormant. It's not doing stuff, it's dormant. Okay, and so uh, this collectively means that an application is deactivated. It's, 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 not, it's no longer running, right? I mean, is it running anymore? No. no. So it's deactivated. So you, did you see, uh, mm -hmm. like David showed you those four methods, those four event handlers, the application deactivating method, that's what is called when an application uh, goes into dormant state. 
So, but it's still in memory. So after, uh, what happens is this Windows Phone it has this cache memory, right? And when this when an app gets dormant, it takes a snapshot of that memory, a snapshot of the app, and stores it in the cache. And that is the reason once Hinchan is finished with his phone call, and suppose he he listens to music, or he uh, watches, uh, he goes to Google Chrome, and he, uh, now he wants to return back to the texting message, texting uh, app. So what there's a special uh, Windows Phone has this back button, okay, that allows you to have, see all the apps that are presently in dormant state. He can select that app now. So he'll be he so if you're uh, if you're texting Hegan, you know about uh, about something. So when he opens this text messaging app, it, it's gonna be Hegan over there again. It's he's not gonna see the list of contacts or he's not gonna see the complete list of messages. He's gonna see the page where he had stopped. And so that's the the dominant thing. And now, but this cache memory is limited because what happens is, say Himchan opens an app, and then while uh, uh, there's an app running, and he opens another app. So this current app goes into the dormant state. He opens another app. So the current app goes into the dormant state. So it's like a stack. You guys know what a stack, right? It's, it's a data structure. It's a lasting first order data structure. So you keep pushing the stacks. Uh, you keep pushing the uh, uh, the snapshot of the apps, right? You keep basically the da the data regarding the app into the stack. So the stack keeps on getting bigger. But the cache is very limited because it's a phone. It's not a computer. That's the reason. In a Windows Phone OS, uh, only one app can run at a time. Not more than that, because the battery life is very limited, right? Uh, and that's the most important thing. So uh, ultimately, the cache is limited, so it can it can't hold more apps. That is when the app that is present at the bottom of the stack is exhausted. That's when an app goes from dormant to tombstone. So it's tombstone. It's RIP. Okay. However, it's still it's not completely destroyed. If you see the arrow here, going from tombstone to activating, which means that you can bring the app back from the tombstone state to the activated state. But there's a drawback to this. Yeah, please. No, no, no. Go on. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so when you're bringing it back from the uh, tombstone state to the activated state, the thing is that uh, how do you do this? Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, when an app is going into the tombstone state, the OS by default it just saves the navigation page of the app. It saves the navigation page because of which when you return back from the tombstone state to the activated state, you see the same page. But it doesn't save the data. Unlike dormant, dormant it saves the data, but in tombstone it doesn't save the data. It looks like in a web browser you lost the connection, then you come back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just that one without having anything only that cut off the page. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so. Uh, 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 oh. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, um, thank you. Uh, so the thing is, uh, however, Windows for uh, Windows operating system, the Windows Phone operating system has a special facility that allows you to save that data. Uh, even if an, if an app gets tombstone, I'll be telling you why do they have that facility? Why do you need that facility? And that is called state dictionaries. So state dictionaries allow you to store that data in case if an app gets tombstone. And the, app, the data that you should uh, store should be serializable. Is it, uh, I hope you guys know what is serializable? Object serialized? You know, no, not many students know that. Okay, should I explain what is that? I can just give it a... No, it's because of the time. Okay, the okay, okay. I'll but you study, go to the Google, study data, uh, data serial, serialization, or object yes. serialization. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 what is the spell? Is it S-E-R-I-A-L? S-E-R-I-A-L? So, and, but now why do they have this facility? Because, for example, Him Chan, now he's working with his texting app. Okay, and now certain his exams of he puts the app into dormant state and his exams have come for two weeks he doesn't open that app. But his mobile is there. So that app is being there in the dormant state forever, right? So the Windows Phone OS is ultimately gonna close it. So that's the reason the application closing method, what David showed you before, that's gonna close that app. And the deactivating method does uh, something when you're making the app going to sleep. So when an app is going to sleep, you don't know whether that app will be brought back to activating state or not. It may be exhausted. You don't know what the user is going to do. That is the reason the code that you write in the closing method, in the deactivating method, you got to write that in the closing method as well. You got to treat them as the same. Yes. Right. So this this looks kind of similar to to paging to me in that. But where is the dormant app stored? And is it stored still in RAM, or is that pushed off into into non-volatile memory? And is the two stone app pushed off into uh, I'll, I'll tell you very frankly, I haven't gone into, uh, we haven't gone into the memory aspect actually, but we, we so, haven't gone into uh, the... Smartphone like, has a non-volatile memory. What's that? 
the so smartphone has a non volatile yeah, memory. Yeah, it, it would have to, sort of like the OS lives and everything else. You have the RAM and then. Mm. No, that's the, the volatile memory, right? Yeah, the it's RAM is the volatile, and then you have like the SD card or. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And, yeah. and so okay. in normal operating systems, you have the paging going on, you know, between RAM and hard drive and stuff. So I was just wondering if the dormant is still existent in RAM, but it's just, you know, the, the, the pointer is no longer there, it's often another application. And then in Tombstone, if it's pushed off into the SD card and out of RAM. Yeah. So, yeah. Because if you had like, um, yeah. if you had tons of Tombstone apps, you, um, you could yeah. just like fill up the RAM really fast. So I was no, just no, they, they take care of that. That's the reason yeah. uh, they allow maximum eight apps to go into dormant. After that, they start removing apps. No, I mean for the Tombstone ones. If yeah. those are also okay. continue yeah. to be yeah. stored in yeah. RAM, then you Look, could... it looks like it's a state of memory, or it's going to the disk, or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Disk or physical. Uh, okay. okay. And then uh, look, wait, I have one other question: Is that um, say you were on a web browser or something, you're downloading a file, and then a phone call comes in? Yes, you can, yes, yes. Continue yes, 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 yes. We can take care of that. There is a facility. Um, uh, I don't remember the name of that facility, but there's a facility in the app. You can take care of that. It's it's what I studied was through the lock screen, but it's it's kind of the same case. Uh, what uh, because when the lock screen comes or when you're browsing, the application goes into dormant state, right? Okay. Uh, but uh, we can make sure that even after the app is hidden by another app, it can continue that dormant. So it, it does support multi-threading still. Uh, yeah. It's just it's it has this kind of high-level abstraction on top of it. Probably. I, okay. Makes sense. Did you understand the multi-threading? Yeah, you know, basically right, the app's still right in the back. Yeah, it, it's still, it's, it's, still, it's yeah. the, there's still scheduling going on behind the scenes on the um, CPU level. But synchronization. Right? But at this level, is this is more like a high-level abstraction on top of apps running. Right. It doesn't mean technically the app's not running right Okay. Right. Okay, it's because of the times. So let's okay. move on. Okay, yeah, so okay. okay. So that was it? All right. Yeah. All right, let me go ahead and show you uh, the example of what happens. So, okay, you have, a, you have an app running, it's active. On the other screen over here, you have an app that's dormant. Now that you open up a calculator app, that main one is now dormant with the other app that's dormant. Same thing goes, same thing goes. But look, notice, notice how this one is getting sent down to uh, Tombstone because it needs some additional resources. Again, you know what he was saying earlier is that when an app need when an app's low on resources, it has to it has to do something, right? So then it'll send it to a tombstone. Again, you decide to uh, you decide to close one of the apps, okay? And you still have one in the dormant. You close your calculator, okay? And then I'll notice in the last one that you're able to bring it back from tombstone to active. So it looks That's like you're explaining on, uh, this smartphone version of operating system. How it works. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, last part, we're going to I, I know we're running out of time. You just mm -hmm. finish with this in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, Android app versus Windows Phone. Because uh, our research is focusing on those three areas on the basis of KSAs. So we'll be exploring Android, Windows Phone, and the iOS. Okay. Uh, one thing you can compare on is Android versus the .NET environment. You guys know what's .NET, right? Because .NET allows you to develop the form. You can use C Sharp, you can use Visual, um, you can use Visual Basic, mm -hmm. right? You can use C++. Uh, so the thing is, the, the good thing about Android is that it has a lot of platform in independence as compared to the .NET environment. Because the .NET environment, uh, you need to have the .NET, .NET environment so that the .NET <coughs> language can compile to an MSI and that can compile to a native code. But however, that means Android also you need Android SDK. Yes. Otherwise you can. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true, uh, but um, what what I what we read on Google's website was what they stated was that soon Android will be running on all devices because it's of uh, because they uh, because of the platform independence basically yeah so I think this is uh, so far we've gone and we just started our work and we're going to be doing more and we're going to be heading to Alaska, Alaska. yes okay when is the due date over oh, that conference. Uh, March 15th. March 14th. Can you make it? Yeah, yeah we, we can make it. We're, we'll be done by Monday. We've started the abstract already. Yeah. No. Okay, so this one, Steve, does not show that the approach of a KSA. Yep. Just yes. you explain how Windows Phone works. Right. Yes, okay. yes. We shall do Okay, so let's go to Alaska. Yes, Good question. Good question. Thank you, everyone. Okay.
Do you want to say something to your mom? Yes. <laughs> Do you know your son Raul is doing great jobs, then he will learn how to work with it together. Oh, so I'm his advice, okay? So he will have a wonderful time here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, good to go. Great.